Hey guys and welcome back to Hardware Unbox, more monitor content coming straight at you today where we'll be looking at one of ViewSonic's top end gaming monitors, the imaginatively named XG2703-GS to discuss how it performs and to give you guys a few easy tips on how to improve its color accuracy through the on-screen display controls. The XG2703-GS, which I'm going to have to call the beast for the rest of this video thanks to its ridiculous product name, packs a ton of great features. It's a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 LCD panel using what ViewSonic calls IPS type technology. Digging a little deeper reveals this panel is actually using AU Optronics AHVA technology, which despite its name doesn't refer to vertical alignment tech like other VA displays. Instead, AHVA stands for Advanced Hyper Viewing Angle, a technology that has its foundations in IPS. So I guess it pretty much is an IPS panel, just with a confusing panel technology name. Oh, and it is a true 8-bit panel, none of this 6-bit plus dithering crap. When you're looking out for panels, you always want to make sure it's 8-bit, and the Beast here definitely provides that. So the Beast's 1440p resolution is complemented by a native 144Hz refresh rate with the ability to overclock up to 165Hz using the on-screen display. This process is pretty easy and while the monitor does warn you about overheating and a bunch of other stuff while overclocked, I didn't actually experience any of these issues while using the monitor at 165Hz. If you do end up buying one, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't just run it at 165Hz all the time, especially as you're paying more than a typical 1440p 144Hz monitor for this additional refresh refresh rate. Of course, it wouldn't be a top-end monitor without adaptive sync technology. In this case, G-Sync for those with NVIDIA graphics cards, although there is a free sync model available. It also supports ultra-low motion blur, which strobes the backlight to eliminate motion blur, though you cannot use both G-Sync and ultra-low motion blur at the same time. Most gamers will want to stick with just G-Sync, Though if you're playing a fast paced competitive game, you may benefit from enabling ULMB if you're pushing at least 120 frames per second. The Beast uses a flicker free backlight capable of a maximum brightness of 350 nits according to ViewSonic. We're also seeing a 1000 to 1 rated contrast ratio uh, that ignores the ridiculous 120 million to 1 dynamic ratio. You should probably just disable dynamic contrast ratio straight out of the box for the best results. So 1000 to 1 rated contrast ratio, 4 milliseconds, great to great response times, 178 degree viewing angles in both directions. The viewing angles on this monitor are actually unbelievably good, probably due to that hyper viewing angle tech with essentially no color shift at off angles and only a small brightness reduction. And just on the response times, four milliseconds is fine for this sort of monitor. And I found the advanced response time setting produced the best blur reduction with that inverse ghosting, which is something that you will get if you use the ultra fast setting. Of course, with ultra low motion blur, you can improve that even even further, but again, you know, you kind of uh, can't use that with G-Sync, which is a bit disappointing. As a quick note on refresh rate, I use a 100Hz Acer Predator X34 for most of my gaming, so I can notice an improvement to smoothness and responsiveness when jumping up to 144Hz, but the jump to 165Hz on this monitor is certainly a lot harder to notice coming from 144Hz, and unless you have a super powerful gaming desktop or enjoy low detail gaming, you won't be hitting above 144fps at 1440p ultra detail settings all that often. Still, I guess the extra refresh rate is nice to have as PC hardware improves over the coming years because you probably won't be upgrading your monitor all that often or at least if you're spending this kind of money you definitely won't be wanting to upgrade particularly often. Let's talk about how the ViewSonic Beast performs in terms of color accuracy. Before I jump into some of our Calman 5 results, here's a very accentuated photo I took of the Beast displaying a black screen in a dark room. Here you can see some noticeable backlight bleed, particularly in the bottom left and top right corners. Now, this photo isn't really representative of how the monitor actually looks in a dark room, but the backlight bleed is certainly noticeable anyway. It's very slightly noticeable under the artificial lights of my office as well, which is a minor concern, but nothing too bad here. Anyway, onto the color results, and here we're looking at how the monitor performs directly out of the box. We're seeing it set to its maximum brightness by default, which produces 358 nits of brightness and a contrast ratio of 1043 to 1, pretty close to ViewSonic's original specifications. 
Default grayscale performance isn't great, particularly due to a weak gamma result of just 2.03 and an average Delta E2000 value of 3.27. You can see from the color temperature graph that reds are underrepresented here by default as well. Saturation performance is okay. Again, we're seeing undersaturated reds, but better saturation for greens and blues. Overall, a Delta E2000 value of 2.39 is a bit short of what I'd like to see here, but not awful for a default calibration. And in our color checker test, we can see here an average Delta E2000 value of just under 3.0, which is okay again, but not ideal for color accurate work. Interestingly, color gamut clocks in at 110% of sRGB by default, while luminance sweeps are reasonably tight. If you want to calibrate this monitor, but you don't have a dedicated calibration tool, here are the steps I'd take to improve performance, at least on my review unit. Switch the gamma from 2.2 to 2.4. This setting actually produces a gamma of 2.2, so it's a bit confusing the naming there, but I guess they might have stuffed up some of their uh, calibration profiles on this monitor. You should also switch the color temperature mode to user color, then switch the G gain to 95 and the B gain to 96, while leaving the R gain untouched. And finally, if you want to set it to around 200 nits, set the brightness to 47, which I think provides the best experience indoors. With the monitor set to these settings, contrast ratio is reduced to just 959 to 1, although average color temperature is much improved, now at an extremely solid 6585K, and the grayscale Delta E2000 value is an excellent 0.83. Gamma at nearly 2.2 has also been corrected, so very decent results across our grayscale tests here. Saturation has been significantly improved from an average Delta E2000 value of 2.39 down to 1.23, which is just shy of the 1.0 value considered very accurate. Color checker results also move from an average Delta E from around 3.0 to 1.61, again a very solid improvement. The adjustments also pull back the sRGB gamut to 99.999%. No joke, I actually tested this monitor a couple of times and yep, 99.9991% of the sRGB gamut, so super accurate there. Now is also a great time to discuss panel uniformity, matching what we discovered earlier with backlight bleed. The panel here isn't entirely uniform, with the bottom left and top right areas deviating the most from the center level. When calibrating the beast using my i1 Display Pro, I hit a grayscale average Delta E2000 value of 0.43, which is an excellent result, as well as a flat temperature curve with an average of 6524K. So pretty much dead accurate and suitable for color accurate work. Saturation Delta E2000 average improved to 1.01, Pretty much accurate, really impressed with the results here, while the color checker result also improves to a Delta E2000 value of 1.20. It's pretty safe to say that with proper calibration, the Beast can be a great monitor for color accurate work, while also providing the benefits of 1440p, G-Sync, and 165Hz refresh rates for gamers. It's a pretty versatile monitor, and you can even get decent color results just by tweaking a few things in the on-screen display. The ViewSonic XG2703-GS is a pretty expensive monitor, so you'd want it to pack great color performance and features. You can purchase one through Amazon for around $700 US or $900 in Australia. I think that's a pretty fair price, although of course on the expensive side, but you do get features like 1440p resolution at 27 inches, 165 hertz refresh rates, hard to pass up stuff like that with G-Sync, and also, you know, great color performance is always nice to have. We'll have some more monitor stuff coming soon, so check back on Hardware Unboxed in the coming weeks. But for now, I'll catch you guys next time.